In this video, we're going to present two mathematical concepts that are used to describe the flow rule in von Mises plasticity that we presented in the previous video. These are the associated flow rule and the normal normality rule. Recall that based on some experimental observations, followed by using the concept of plastic energy dissipation, we reach to the flow rule equation stating that the rate which provides the increment in the plastic strain component uh, ij is equal to the rate or increment in the equivalent plastic strain multiplied by 3 over 2 the corresponding deviatoric stress component divided by the von Mises stress. Recall too that the elastic strain energy using the concept of preservation of energy in elastic materials can be viewed as the derivative of a strain energy potential function with respect to the stress component. And the question is, can, can the flow rule viewed similarly? Is there a plastic potential energy function whose derivatives give the increment in the plastic strain component? Can we find a function phi such that partial phi by partial sigma ig is equal to 3 over 2 Sig over sigma von Mises. Yes, in fact, the derivative of the yield function, given as sigma von Mises minus sigma yield, with respect to the stress component, is equal to 3 over 2 Sig sigma von Mises. Because the flow rule is based on the derivative of the plastic potential energy function, which also happens to be the yield function, the flow rule is called an associated flow rule or associated with the yield function. In plasticity of soils, other flow rules exist, which are termed non-associated flow rules. The next mathematical concept that describes the von Mises flow rule is the normality rule. Let's recall the concept of directional derivative. Given a scalar function phi that assigns a scalar value to every vector in R2, the gradient of phi is a vector with components, the derivative of phi with respect to the first component of position in the space, and the derivative of phi with respect to the second component in this space. The gradient of phi dot n gives the directional derivative of phi in the direction of n. Here we show an example for a particular scalar field phi. On the left hand side we can see that n points almost perpendicular to the contour plots of phi. On the right hand side n is in the direction parallel to the contour lines. The contour lines provide locations of constant phi, and thus the directional, the directional derivative of phi along n, when n is parallel to the contour lines, is equal to zero. To summarize, if n points towards constant phi, then the directional derivative of uh, is equal to um, is equal to zero. The gradient of phi is always perpendicular to the direction of constant phi, and the gradient of phi is normal to the surface of constant phi. Considering that the von Mises associated flow rule assumes that the plastic strain components are equal to the gradient of the yield function, therefore, in the stress space, the plastic strain components are perpendicular or normal to the lines of constant phi, i.e. the plastic strain components when drawn in the stress space are perpendicular or normal to the yield surface. Obviously, the associated flow rule leads to the normality rule, and the normality rule implies that the components of uh, the plastic strain increment are such that the sum of the diagonal components are equal to zero.
One last topic that I would like to briefly describe is the Tresca yield function. The multi-axial Tresca yield function states that the material will yield when half the maximum difference between the principal stretch, uh, stresses reaches a critical value, which is the maximum shear stress. When uh, plotted along the von Mises yield function, one notices that they predict almost identical behavior or almost identical yield surface. For hand calculations, some authors prefer to use the Tresca yield function. However, for computational algorithms such as the finite element analysis, it's easier to implement the von Mises yield criterion because of its smoothness.